Beach State has been as close as four. Ware just left an open path to the basket. But Long Beach hustles it to get it back. And a foul on Travis Relaford of Kansas. Two great looks, Sean, for Long Beach State. Very similar to the game against Louisville in the second half where they kept fighting back. They got themselves under 10 points and missed layups, a turnover. Just those are the type of plays that are just back-breaking plays. The difference here is they a little bit of fight, a little bit of resiliency on the offensive glass gets them to the free throw line. But you can't walk away making one of two. In this game, 619, bonus time the rest of the way. This game will last an eternity if Long Beach State continues to attack and be aggressive and not just settle for permanent shots. You know, 18 to 24, they have outshot Kansas at the foul line. In fact, they've had 24 attempts to just 11 for Kansas. Nice play on the 1-4 high. To perfection. You cheat out over the top, beautiful execution in the back door cut and the great finish by Travis Relifer. You can beat pressure by utilizing back cuts. And that time you extend the pressure out, you force it to go away from the rim, and then you cut hard. Kansas, four times they've had a bucket and one in a game. The dunk was great, the cut was sensational. And Ware gets fouled. A hedge by Justin Wesley. We'll put Ware right back to the line. Double bonus for Long Beach State. Wesley's going to have to get better at not fouling. And he is as foul prone as any player in the conference right now in the Big 12. And Bill Self for years has liked to use that hard hedge, almost like a two brother hedge at times. They have worked extremely hard in the last couple of days at that end of the floor with the hard hedge. And that time, Wesley too slow to react over the top. All you've got to do is show, force the dribbler to take one dribble away from your man, and then open up the gate and allow the switch to come back. We're perfect at the line, six of six. Long Beach State, just like the cousin that hangs on the couch for too long, will not go away. Kansas trying to get rid of these guys. This time Long Beach State sends the one four high better. Bad pass. Anderson fouled, and he had took no time to get to the other end. And that's, that's on Johnson. That'll be his fifth. It's still 5.37 to go in the game. Well, you compound a mistake with a lazy pass up over the top. Long Beach State gets the run out. Then defensively, you just reach in and you foul, and you're done for the day. And 16 turnovers, Sean, for Kansas. A reminder that Thursday night, you want to be right here with ESPNU, a full night of special surrounding the Home Depot College Football Awards. At 5 Eastern, it's the Home Depot College Football Awards Roundtable Special. Then at 7 Eastern, Palmer and Pollock, off of their take on the night's awards, then at 8 and 11 Eastern, you can catch all the latest from the red carpet as players and coaches enter and leave the event at the Atlantic Dance Hall at Disney's Boardwalk at the Walt Disney World Resorts. That's Thursday night on ESPNU. Elijah Johnson sets down with six points. Kansas, 10 second-half turnovers. Some of them have been careless. Others have been forced by the pressure of Long Beach State. And the other issue here for Kansas to continue to foul so Long Beach can score with the clock stop, but they've had too many missed free throws. Anderson, 81% from the free throw line, and he has missed far too many. One of two, not good enough on the road in Allen Fieldhouse. He has missed three tonight.
Anderson. He made the shot in the first half and faces and scores there. Huge shot. Higher degree of difficulty on that one in the second half as good defense was applied. A career high for Thomas Robinson, 22 points. Wow. Diversovic trying a three. He's only made or tried two this year prior to that. An alert play by Casper Ware, the defensive player of the year last year in the Big West. And Ennis hits a three, Sean. They will not go quietly into the night. Dan Monson, both hands over the top of his head. On Diversovic's three-point shot. The latter one, though, he will take all night long. Thomas Robinson, a great job turning face. Look at the defensive pressure that's on him. Steps back, a little hesitation. Elevate, hand in his face, knocks it down, makes a big play. The other end, look at the heady play by Casper where dives on it, immediately finds his big. And then open floor situations is where Long Beach State can hurt you. Great job. Bain is posting up in the corner and knocking down the three. It's not often, Sean, that a player of the year in the conference is also the defensive player of the year. But Casper Ware did that last year for Long Beach State. You find ways to impact the game. Even when you're struggling offensively, there's other ways you can go ahead and make an impact. Still 4.42 to go. Kansas by seven with possession. Not the best shooting night for Casper Ware. But down the stretch, here you are. Under five minutes left to go. It's very much so in the game. Diversovic denies the pass, but also hangs on Thomas Robinson's body. Four on Diversovic. His fourth percent of the at the line is Thomas Robinson shooting in one and one. Robinson made his first two free throws, missed his next two, he's now made his last three. And again, a career high for him, eclipsing his 20 that he had against Georgetown earlier this year. Stepping up when it matters most. Where jumps up and nowhere to go. And he gets it back somehow. And finds TJ Robinson. Sometimes you do it the hard way. This is the hard way. Turn it over, steal it, find your teammate. Get a foul. The sequence almost describes the Long Beach State's team. And again, the free throw is a problem. T.J. Robinson at 17 in the first half. He's got one this half. Here's your one and two again. in the passing lane. Tehan to the basket. Oh, there's your tip dunk. Told you. People pay admission for it. One of the best in the country at it. Where? Thomas Robinson said it would be about Mr. Robinson's neighborhood. You mentioned T.J. Robinson struggling in the second half. Thomas Robinson has turned it up. He's rebounded the basketball at both ends of the floor, creating opportunities. Nice John Taylor forcing a shot. Thomas Robinson has scored six straight points for Kansas. And it's just hit from this spot. He does it again. <laughs> Coach Monson looking at his team. Thank guys, if we just clean it up a little bit. Too many turnovers couple open shots a seven point game still Long Beach State Sean is like a smoke alarm that just keeps chirping and here they come again and a foul on Rutherford
18 Kansas turnovers. 18 Kansas turnovers. This isn't one of them, though. Thomas Robinson, one-handed, throws it back in. He's playing with some heart. They're going to need more, though. Chuck Norris is a hunter, but Chuck Norris does not hunt. Hunting would imply the possibility of failure. There are 10 million people in the world of Warcraft because Chuck Norris allows them to live. I'm Chuck Norris, and I approve this game. World of Warcraft. Try it free at Warcraft.com. What's your game? gonna build a fuel efficient car the first thing you gotta do is make a car that's worth building one with character and conviction that has all the luxury you'd expect and pride that you can notice from down the street then and only then do you put in an eight-speed transmission that gets 31 miles per gallon that combination of luxury and efficiency only comes from one place in the world. Hey, Shroff here in studio. Coming up next, it's the experts. We'll talk about Big East expansion. The Big East could announce as soon as Wednesday the addition of five new teams. Boise State and San Diego State would go in as football-only members. Houston, Central Florida, and SMU would go in as members of all sports. Again, we'll talk about this on the experts following the game in Lawrence. All right, Anish, thanks. Here, Long Beach State, the chirping smoke alarm won't go away. Trailing only by seven with 3.01 to go. But listen, they've done this before. Just ask Jamie Dixon of Pitt. Not that long ago, they go into the zoo, as they call it, at Pittsburgh. And Casper Ware, 28 points in the game, did a little bit of everything. They limited their turnovers. They found success. In is from three. We've already seen two of those from that exact same spot in this contest. And it was a huge signature win by 10 in Pittsburgh for Long Beach State. And so far here in the second half, how important are turnovers? How important is taking care of the ball? 16 points off of turnovers here in the second half by Long Beach State. Ennis to the line for the 49ers. He gets two shoe shots in the double bonus. He has 12 all in the second half. That win at Pitt ended a 58-game non-conference winning streak for the Panthers. This is back to a five-point game. We're at Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas, the 13th-ranked Jayhawks, led by as many as 19. They've had a career night from Thomas Robinson, and yet they can't get rid of Long Beach State. Mitch Holtis with you, along with Sean Farney. Number 13, Edis Diversivik. Edis Diversivik has just fouled out of the game, so both teams have lost a player. Elijah Johnson for Kansas and Edis for Long Beach State. I think Thomas Robinson does an excellent job of is on the catch, he will rip through low and strong. And that's how he's been able to draw some fouls in this game and get himself to the free throw line in the second half. Kansas has not shot the ball nearly as well here in the second half as they did in the first half. And Thomas Robinson and shooting two. Thomas Robinson, 26 points, 10 rebounds. A career game, and he's missed three foul shots. Play by Connor Tehan. Well, Thomas Robinson was the one that pushed out to the sideline, bustling after his misses. Again, empty opportunities to secure the ball down by five, just a shade under three minutes left to go in this game. 
Tyshawn Taylor playing with that gimpy knee. Robinson forcing. Tehan is second offensive rebound for Kansas. Dan Monson puts his head down in his hand. Taylor, point blank, and one. Tyshawn Taylor makes them pay. You cannot give up two offensive rebounds. First the hustle on the outside. That one by Connor Tehan kicks it out to Taylor. With two minutes left to go in the game, you have got to finish possessions off the defensive glass and shoring things up. They had cut it to five, Long Beach State. Had a chance twice. And now they trail by eight. Climb uphill at two minutes to go. And it's Tehan with the defensive play. Now you've got to extend out your pressure. You're down by eight, under two minutes left to go. A lot of turnovers here in the second half, but it starts with great ball pressure. Robinson with the two bigs. Another and one opportunity for Kansas. But Connor Tehan's hustle is not what you're going to see in the stat sheet, but it's led to this flurry. It was a five-point lead, last possession. Three-point play, another N1 opportunity, and you're down by ten. Shooting one, that is Jeff Whitney. With a one block away from a double-double, continues outstanding, a triple-double, outstanding free-throw shooting. Continues. A foul on Kansas, they didn't want that, but Ware was looking. Trying to create contact. Elongate this game. A minute and 30 seconds left to go. You've got to pressure, extend out. You've got to try to force some turnovers. And then offensively, I take everything to the rim. Get yourself to the free throw line and try to make this game as long as possible. So this is the cat to do it. We'll see what he can do with the line. And the jinx. Yeah, seven missed free throws here in the second half alone. Twenty-three. Thirty-two, actually nine for the game. Returning to Long Beach State. Back to a ten-point advantage. Full court press here now by Long Beach State. Full court press. It's important to try to create turnovers and opportunities. Tyshawn Taylor has it ripped apart from him. And a block by Relaford and a foul by Relaford. And Taylor's hurt. Again, Tyshawn Taylor did not start the game, Sean, because he tweaked a knee yesterday. This might be beyond a tweak. Either he's cramping really badly or he has re-injured that right knee. A lot of contact on the play. And he is limping. He's favoring that right leg. Tyshawn Taylor did not start, but he has played 32 minutes. Free throw hit by Mike Caffey for his third point. How about the freshman? And Allen Fieldhouse stepping to the line. And again, great substitution by Coach Monson. It stops the clock, allows the press to set up. And Taylor looks like he's moving okay. Maybe just cramping a little bit. A quick foul on Ware. That's his fourth. Okay. If you're Long Beach State, you try to get the turnover right away. You don't get the turnover, you got a foul right away. Eight point lead. Well, that's fifth on where. My bad, I'm one off. That really hurts him because that's their best guy to get to the basket and get fouled. And Thomas Robinson, when the Morris twins left for the NBA, it's going to be Thomas Robinson to try to carry this team, and he's done it tonight. And he has needed every single point, every single rebound, a perfect first half for Thomas Robinson. In the second half, he's had to work a lot harder to find looks. That was one of the more difficult shots he's had the entire game, but never stops playing. Never, never for a second takes a playoff.
And that's what you love about him. You know, he'll make mistakes. He'll be out of position from time to time. But he gives you a lot more positives than negatives, and that shows up once again. We've also seen him, though, pass the ball tonight, reading the double team. We saw him take a charge. There's really nothing he hasn't done tonight to help this team in all phases. And he is playing like a first-team All-American. It's going to be a turnover. And down nine with 70 seconds. Dan Munson, oh, by the way, Dan, you go to North Carolina next. Xavier in the Diamond Head Classic. It's like, when do we play Irvine? That'll be in conference play, of course. This kid for the Anators fans. Most Turner's team actually very young this year for in the Big West. Their second season of him at the helm. Caffey and the foul on Taylor reaching in. Another steal, another turnover. Here's this impressive schedule for Long Beach State. Well, you see North Carolina, then Eastern New Mexico on the 19th before they head out to the Diamond Classic. A strong field at the Diamond Classic. Then they get Irvine, January 2nd. That's the game you're looking <laughs> But you got to go to their place. The Brent Event Center on the campus of UCI. Well, I'm just impressed with these guys from the standpoint of their toughness, resiliency, and they are the chirping smoking. The Kansas, by the way, <laughs> their, their schedule, they're pretty good as well. On Saturday, of course, Jay Billis will be here. Ohio State, Jared Sullinger going against Thomas Robinson. What a great matchup that's going to be. And then Davidson in Kansas City. A steal off the inbounds play. Long Beach does have one timeout left. Ennis hits a three. It's back to four points. Can you find the smoke alarm? Well, you can find turnovers if you're Bill Self. And the turnovers, once again, rearing their head here late in this game. Points off of turnovers in the second half have been a huge plus for Long Beach State. Not handling the press. Maybe a little bit too much patience in their their approach, but another big shot from the outside by Ennis. He's got 16 tonight. Again, he had 19 against Pitt in that big win against the Panthers. This is still a four-point game. There's your reset. Both teams are in the double bonus, and now Long Beach State is out of timeouts. Well, and you mentioned Ennis. All 16 of those came in the second half, and you see the three-point shooting numbers much better in the second half. For Long Beach State, not nearly as efficient, not nearly as many attempted by the Kansas Jayhawks. And the turnovers, a huge factor tonight for Kansas. And then the subsequent points by the 49ers off those turnovers. I thought in the Duke game, Kansas got tired at the end. Now, I know it's the third game playing in the Maui Invitational. Tonight, though, I thought I've seen it, too. There's been some times in the second half it looked like there was some fatigue caused turnovers. And Coach Phelps said coming into this game, he thinks only Kentucky will play at as a frenetic pace as Long Beach State does. And again, coming out of the timeout, Long Beach State's able to set up the press. Long Beach State, 25 points off turnovers in the second half. Long Beach is going to have to foul now, and they do. It's Tashawn Taylor. You look at the lead right now, it is a four-point lead for Kansas. You think back, seven missed free throw attempts here in the second half for Long Beach State. Seven. Tyshawn Taylor shooting two. I told you, one out of two. Not good enough on the road in Allen Fieldhouse. Taylor knocks down his second pressure free throw. Long Beach State has shot 37 free throws. Kansas has shot 21. And they are in Long Beach. And that, that speaks to the aggressive nature of Long Beach State. Tehan trying to hang. Anderson missing a three with the gigantic rebound. 
That might do it with the 88% at the line so far this season. What a hard fought game for Well, it wasn't Swiss Family Robinson, it was Mr. Robinson's neighborhood. And the numbers all on the positive side for Thomas Robinson. 26 points, a career high, the efficiency from the field, the 11 rebounds, a very quiet second half by T.J. Robinson. He only had two points second half and zero field goals. Both of those were on Al Shot makes. Dan Munson's thinking what could have been. Well, he's upset about the elbow. He thought the elbow was extended out by Withy. A great game by Withy. Career high for Withy. 13 rebounds, nine block shots, and now a turnover by Long Beach State. And finally, Kansas is saying, I think we're going to get rid of these guys. Offensive foul on Tyshawn Taylor against the press. And I'm guaranteeing you that will drive Bill Self up the banana wall. Uh, this is just mental lapses. Kansas has it back, but 22 Kansas turnovers. That's going to need to be cleaned up before Ohio State comes in. You have 22 turnovers against Aaron Kraft and Jared Sullinger and William Buford. You're going to lose in that non-conference win streak that now balloons up to 46 non-conference home wins in a row. Is definitely in on the line on Saturday. But Kansas keeps fighting off Long Beach State all night long. And once again, our final score, Kansas 88 with a career high 25 from Thomas Robinson. For Sean Farnham and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Mitch Holtis. Coming up next, it's the experts. For more information, to log on to ESPN.com. The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night from Lawrence, Kansas. Coming up on the experts, rematch. It's the new trigger word in all of college football, but we have a championship redux. Alabama LSU part two. In the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, it's Oklahoma State and Stanford. We'll preview a game that features two of the best quarterbacks in all of college football. And the Heisman finalists, they're out, they'll be in New York City. Our experts will tell you who should strike the pose. Welcome to the experts coming up today to the BCS get it right that is a hot topic the last couple of days who should win the Heisman our experts will tell you and we'll also give you our picks for the college football awards show which is this Thursday on ESPN and welcome officially to the experts I'm Anish Shroff this is the show where a bunch of guys sit around we talk football and we do it <laughs> while wearing makeup let's meet the panel <laughs> You have makeup on? Don't I tell do. People As that do you. <laughs> and all these guys do. Tom Luganville, former Georgia Tech quarterback. He runs all things recruiting over at ESPN. You know, Matt Stinchcomb, former All-American offensive lineman at Georgia. You were there for the SEC championship game. Yeah, up close and personal. Impressive for one team, anyway. <laughs> Charles Arbuckle, former UCLA tight end. We're going to have to go fisticuffs again? No, nah, man. I just want you to say I was All-American, too. You never do that. <laughs> All-American tight end reason at UCLA. To get upset with you. <laughs> Jason Seahorn, former DB at USC, also played for 10 seasons in the NFL. With us today, Turner Gill. Coached at Kansas and Buffalo. Coach, we appreciate you being on the panel. Well, thanks for having me on. And last but not least, Mark Schleybaugh, ESPN.com's college football columnist. And we're going to start with Mark. We actually have some big breaking news off the top. Has to do with conference realignment. Mark, I know you were working the phones before the show. What have you got for us? Well, it looks like Big East is going to add Boise State, San Diego State, Houston, Central Florida, and SMU maybe as early as Wednesday but definitely sometime this week, according to a Big East official I talked to, 
I mean, it, it, it keeps the Big East alive. It saves their existence. I think after losing TCU and West Virginia and Syracuse and Pittsburgh to the ACC, their AQ status with the BCS was certainly in jeopardy. The West Virginia, the Big East champion this year, ranked in the 20s in the BCS standings. It was going to be a struggle to keep... Uh, to keep that AQ status with the BCS. So we're looking at the Big East in 2011, Pittsburgh, Syracuse, West Virginia, all of them intend to leave. They will still be there for 2012 or so you would think, but you add in the five teams that you talked about, what does this do for the Big East for next year? I mean, are these five schools, are they going to join the league for 2012? Is there a timetable here? What other details can you add? Well, I think it's, they're going to wait till 2013 13. to officially join the conference. 